Hey guys, so those of you who watch my channel know that I um, mostly work on small engines. I do electronics from time to time if there's something that interests me, mobile phones, anything that I can repair, but I'm focusing on small engines nowadays mostly. But it came up in a Facebook group um, that I'm, uh, which this video will be posted to or linked to. But uh, I will be posting it on my uh, YouTube channel, of course, and then linking to the Small Engine Mechanics group. Um, I was I asked if somebody wanted me to make a, a how-to or tutorial, or call it what you want, on how to make your own rectifier and regulator for a small engine, because the stator of a small engine, if you want to drive, uh, if you want to drive um, LED lights off of that, uh, the stator mostly outputs well it. The stator outputs AC, and not every engine has a built-in or attached uh, rectifier and regulator. And you can, of course, buy those fairly cheap on Amazon and those guys in the States and whatnot. You guys have great parts stores everywhere, so you can just zip out to the store and buy one. But I live in Norway, that's not... I have to order everything and most of the things I have to order I have to order from overseas so you learn to make do or make the stuff you need yourself so I'm going to show you how to make a simple um, 12 volt well this was this uh, the principle is the same on a 12 volt but I was fresh out of 12 volt regulator chips so I only have a 7805 that's a 5 volt regulator uh, same pin out, same everything for a 12 volt. It's just named 7812, not 7805. So what I will be demonstrating now will be 5 volts, but the principle is the same with tw uh, with the 12 volts, just a different regulator. So what you need, there are two things you can use to rectify the current, uh, because alternating current you need to rectify into direct current. So what you need, these are rectifier diodes, uh, these are 1N4007, um, the line on the, as you can see, well, I'm going to try and show you, here. you can see a line there, that means that the power can go that way, but not that way, That will it will block the power going that way, and the way you do a uh, rectifier is I will put a I will put a schematic of a rectifier it's just it's simply just these four rectifier diodes put in uh, soldered together in a certain pattern and you have a bridge rectifier uh, I have a board that I already have done the soldering also I wouldn't take too much time on this video but this is the pattern um, so, if you, I'm going to try and zoom in just a little bit. Zoom out. I'm going to zoom in. So let me find a tweezers or something. Not those. Yeah, there. Um, if you can see here, they are. Uh, these are. I've. I've uh, normally you wouldn't do it like this. This is the way I showed in the schematics. Uh, on the side here, but um, normally you wouldn't solder it like this. I just did it just to demonstrate. And so this is, uh, if you think of the AC side, which I, it's actually the AC side on uh, AC input on these two, and you have the negative and positive output here, uh, which you can see on the back side. Uh, I've used brown and uh, yellow for AC, so this is input, AC input, and this is plus and minus or positive and negative direct current on the output. All you do is place the rectifier diodes and you solder those two points together, the two points up here, you solder those together, those together, those and those. You do not want to solder the legs of a diode together, but only from that diode to that diode, and 
you know all the way around so you have the AC input on those two polarity doesn't matter because alternating current is switching current so that way but you have the negative side or negative output and you have the positive output on that side so I will show you I have a uh, I don't know what it's from oh, she found it somewhere this is a um, it's a well, it's a battery adapter for something or a battery eliminator for something I do not know what I think it was for some garden lights or something it outputs uh, 12 to 14 volts of AC I will show you now that when I put my fluke in, I'm gonna try and turn off that button. No, that did not help. Maybe that helped. Not at all. There's a little bit of glaring happening here. Maybe I can put something under so that the. Yeah. So what I'll do is I will measure the output. Of this it's just two um, two points there so I will measure the output and you will see that this is it's outputting 14 and a half voltage uh, 14 and a half volts AC and what we will do now is take this that I just showed you that I made I'll zoom out a little bit so everything comes a little bit clearer all I do is this is just for demonstrational purposes so don't do it like this but I will put the just into the one into each port then I will switch my meter into DC and I will put the black probe on the black wire and the red probe if I can make this happen it's a little bit stiff these wires so I'm just gonna put it on there and of course that one and it outputs 13.3 volts DC So that's the rectifying done. The rectifying is done. We now have alternating current there and we have direct current there. All done by those four rectifying diodes. I'll turn the fluke off and I will unplug this for now. I'm not going to go into any details on how the bridge works and all that because if you want to know that, well, an electrical engineer or something I am not an electrical engineer by any means um, but I thought I'd show you one thing if I can find the part that I just had here yeah. if you don't want to um, be messing with buying diodes or getting diodes and soldering it all together there is one other thing that you can do you can buy it or you can just if, you, if you're like me you have a lot of older stuff laying around this is the circuit board or circuit from a computer power supply. They take alternating current in, uh, at least here in Norway they do because Norway is 240 AC in every house. And these have a nice, which I have already des desoldered from this, all power supplies in Norway has it. It is a nice little device like this a four pin bridge rectifier and if I zoom in again I'll try and show you the markings on the it's not easy to see but I'll use my tweezers again the two center pins are the alternating current input 
and if I there, and you can see that the positive and negative output are on the sides of positive DC output, negative DC output. That does the same as that. I've used a very large circuit board just to demonstrate everything but these two do the same so if you want you can uh, just do everything on this just solder everything onto this and have a very small device just remember to use heat shrink tubing because you do not want shorts so what we want to do is to regulate this because a stator can output Pretty, pretty high amount of uh, vo uh, voltage and um, you want to regulate that so that it does not go over 12, 12 volts because you want 12 volts and what you do with that is you use a regulator chip a 3 pin like this but as I said in the start this is a 5 volt regulator you need a 12 volt regulator they are 7812 and 7805. This is 05, you want 12. And I will again put up a nice little schematic on the side here. And what you do, it's very simple. All you need is the regulator chip and you need two electrolytic capacitors. You have, uh, and on this you want at, at least 25 volt rating on the caps. I like to use 50 volt because you can safely go up in voltage rating you cannot go down without breaking the caps and this is a 220 microfarad this will be on the or before the regulation or regulator and you have a 0.1 microfarad this will be on the output and these are the polarity of these are shown. This line is the negative side or ground side. All electrolytic capacitors have polarity and make sure you put them correctly because otherwise it will blow. I mean it won't blow up but it will. It will release the magic smoke. I'm gonna try and get my Soaring. It's just a cheap little thing. And this is uh, leg one, two, three, left to right, or bottom to top in this case. One, two, three. And the way I do this is I just put it a little bit above, a little bit above like that. Put the regulator chip and I put it upside down and I just widen two of the legs a little bit just so that it eases the soldering and I use because this is what I have on hand weller flux this is very fluid but it comes with a nice brush and I just give it a nice little brush like that and I find my soldering or solder my soldering iron I like to pre in the tip just to turn and Sure you get good solder, no ridges, and no cold joints. And I also like to remove the legs. And if you remember the schematic that I just had up a little bit ago, you have a 220 going from the 
positive so you can actually just put this the negative side on the second leg or uh, on leg two and the plus on leg one this is the way I do there I just put it just a little bit slanted like that again just widen And what I like to do now, putting away the iron, what I like to do is, because the legs here are supposed to touch, so what I do is I bend it over so that it touches and makes contact. And I add a, more, a little bit more solder so that we have a good connection. So, I am not a professional soldier by any means, this is just a hobby for me. And you make sure that there are no bridges, but you want connections between the legs of the capacitor and the legs of the regulator chip. And then you want the 0.1 microfarad on the output side. And what I will do is I will place that. I will place that here on the top side because the third leg is now on the left side there, and the third leg is the output. And that is a positive, and that one is going to ground which I can go like you know it would help if I um, put the capacitor in from the right side and in this case I will try and remember about the camera again negative polarity matters you know the third wheel is the output and I will put that and I'll place it a little bit down just so that I can link the legs a little bit later on if I didn't so Just a little bit. And in this case, just put the solder to the side there. So we know that the negative is on the bottom side, the negative is also the short lead, and this one is supposed to go on the same as leg number two. So I just flip it over like so. So it touches leg two, but nothing else. And 
and I do not touch anything but the third leg on that side. Now there's no power connected just yet, so it doesn't matter if I short things out now, but I do not want shorts happening when I have power on it. So now all I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I get contact with the third leg. So the negative side on the second leg and the positive lead on the third leg. Just like that. Touch solder. I've been so used to working with fine electronics lately that it's... So. And... And I want the third leg, actually. I need to so in this case I'm not bothering with too much detail on the joints just enough that it I know that it makes good contact and what I need to do now is I need to make sure that the positive goes in on leg one which is on the left side there so I need the positive to go down and onto the and I want the wire to be long enough and I will just make it excessively long and I want the negative to go to leg two which of course is in the middle so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure again I cut that and in this case I'm not going to actually cut the wire I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the insulation because I want this to continue to be the output the positive I need to move I wish I had a nice pair of for removing the sheetings and all that, but I don't. Again, remember polarity, leg one, two, three, left, right, middle, left, middle, right. And when it comes to these are single strand wires and they can be a little bit tricky to get soldered, so what I have this is just flux that I have there and I have a well I did have anyways there I have a brush that I will put onto there I'll take the positive First leg, or leg one, what I'm just going to do is pre tin with a touch. Like so. And again, just pre tin with a 
touch. And I will well, that's typical me. I'll expose a bit more. In this case, I'm going to say to you, don't make what you, don't do what you make as crudely as this, because this is just for demonstrational purposes, and I do not want you to make it like this. This is just for demonstrational purposes. Please do not. If you want to make this, put some prep time into it and make it, make it good, because this is. This is not something that I would that I would put in any machine. This is just to show you how it works. Get my flux out again. Get my wire into that. And the output is leg three on the far right or bottom side, as I put it in like this. And the same goes, so you can use the plus side of the capacitor, which is what I will do. It's also the way it's shown in the schematic I put on earlier. Very crude, but this is a rectifier slash regulator. I'm going to try not to make any. So, what I'm going to do, just to demonstrate, I'm going to plug back in that AC output. Put my fluke. I'll put it in AC voltage. And show you that I'm measuring. outputs if I can get my probes into there like so see 14.6 AC I will switch the fluke to direct current and I will put these again polarity on this side doesn't matter and now we should have 5 volt DC here on the Z five volt regulated current or regulated volts pi five point zero the camera dropped out on me there I hope I didn't lose lose anything but anyways so yeah this is a very simple well in my book it's very simple um, simple device that you can make yourself and you don't spend money making stuff 
or, or buying stuff when you can make it on your own. Four rectifying diodes, two capacitors, and a regulator chip. That's all you need. Here you have rectified and regulated voltage. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you again in my next video. Take care.